Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at a great data structure called an array. Um, I'm going to walk you through a bunch of sample code here and hopefully by the end of it you're going to have a pretty good idea what an array is and how you can start to use it in your programs. So what is an array? Array is basically an object that is set up to hold many values of a certain type. So in this example here I'm going to make an array that stores integers. And so the way you declare it in Java is the array symbols basically a square bracket, square bracket. So we say integer array. I'm going to call it nums, right? That's just my variable name I make up. And I set it equal to a new integer array with 10 index positions. Now, what does this actually do in memory? It basically makes something in memory called nums. And it'll look something like this. Okay, so this would be our array with 10 values stored in it. And by default, integer arrays will hold a zero. So you'll see here all the values are zero. And if you count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I do, in fact, have 10 values there. So when you look back at the code here, that's what the 10 means. Okay, it means it's going to be able to hold 10 of whatever it is you're making. And here I've chosen int. Now, when you also go back, you'll notice there's this column I've added called index. And this is for index position. Because all these things are under the name of nums, there has to be a way to determine which value you're going to be working with. And the way you do it is you do it by referring to the index position. The first index position in an array is going to be 0. And because we said, please hold 10 values in this array, it's going to go from 0 up to 9. So notice it doesn't go up to 10 because you made it 10 big because the counting starts at 0. Okay, so it's 0 to 9. Very common beginner mistake is to think because you have 10 values in there that the index position goes up to 10. Wrong. Okay, it goes up to 1 less than whatever the size of your array is. Okay, it always starts at slot 0. So, this is sort of sitting there in memory, this big chain of data all been set to zero. Now what can you actually do with it? Well, here's how you use these variables. Real easy. Here's an example of setting the first one to 123. So I say, hey nums, index position zero, set your value equal to 123. Notice this is basically the same as going x is 123. The only difference is you have to add the index position because you're dealing with an array and that's it other than that little change of naming the index position you use them just like you would any other variable so slot 0 set yourself to 123 slot 9 the last slot go to 789 so it would do something like this this would change to 123 and that would change to 789 and that's what it's now holding in memory in sort of a line there, right? All those index positions. Now, when you come back here, when we mentioned you use it just like you would any other variable, here's just one or two examples. I can make a new variable sum and say, hey, add up slot 0 plus slot 9. It's going to calculate the answer, I don't know, 912 or something like that, and it'll print out the sum. You can run this program yourself, sort of see the solution after, but it works. Okay, you can treat them just like integers because these are integers, just with the convenience of sharing the same name. Obviously, you can use them in your if statements just like this. If slot 0 is less than slot 9, first is smaller than last, sort of makes sense, and that would run in this case. You can use your shorthand, like your plus plus and minus minus, right? This would take the number in slot 0 and add 1 to it. So this would become 123. It would just add 1, change that to 124. And you can even do this. You can make a variable, set it equal to 9, and you could say print out nums slot 9. Okay, you don't have to have a number there. As long, I should say, as long as you put a number there, this works just fine. And position is an integer, so that works just fine, and this will print out nums slot 9. Pretty good, huh? 
Now I've commented out the next part here. One little rule, I'll do that right there, is do not try to access slots that are not in the array. When we made our array way up there, and we said 10 slots, you know the slots are slot 0 to slot 9. Don't try using slot negative 1. Don't try using slot 10. Don't try using slot a million. It's not going to work. Uh, I want to show you the error because everyone here will obviously make the error at some point. I'm going to try to access slot 1000. And when I give this a run, you're going to get the red lines of death. And you're going to see what the error is. It's a nice error that's very descriptive. You'll see here all my other code worked okay. And now I hit that exception and thread. Okay, it's a problem. Array index out of bounds exception. Well, that pretty well spells it right there. Index out of bounds. I went outside of 0 to 9. And it even tells me what I tried to do. I tried to access slot 1000. You got to go back to your code and figure out what exactly you did wrong, okay, that it went to slot 1000. And in this case, well, yeah, it's obvious. It's right there. But sometimes in your code, it's not going to be so obvious when you start doing trickier things. Now, that's the first part of arrays and the basic use of them. So basically you can store a lot of stuff inside one variable name. What we're going to talk about in the next video is going to be how you can combine the arrays with loops to actually see a bit more power of these arrays, right? That's way better than this stuff. So we'll see you in the next video.